Okay, everybody has a recommendation about the best way to proceed. The best way to proceed is to proceed. I really mean that, is to move forward. And the way I'm going to move forward is I'm going to, at least on each side, get the same denominator for the fraction. So on the left side, I'm going to say 12 would be appropriate. And I'll write this down for you. So uh, one-third would be four twelfths. Now, granted, you might say, I'm not going to do that. That's fine. You could do something different. I'm just saying this is how I'm going to proceed right now, today anyway. Minus seven twelfths. And on the right side, I'm going to get a common denominator of a sixteenth. And that's going to be six sixteenths, one plus two x, minus five sixteenths, two minus three x. And now I'm going to use the distributive property to get rid of those grouping symbols. <coughs> and I'm going to keep twelfths. And then I'll talk about a reduction later. Sixteen twelfths. plus four twelfths of an x minus seven twelfths plus 35 twelfths of an x. I'm going to continue to simplify that side. And what do I see? 39 twelfths. That's these two here. And then what I see, 16 minus 7 is 9 twelfths. All right, there's something else I could do with that, but right now, that's done. Let me go to the other side. What do you get? 6 sixteenths plus 12 sixteenths of an x minus 10 sixteenths plus 15 sixteenths of an x. And I think you combine those together as well. So 12 and 15 is 27 sixteenths of an x. And 6 sixteenths minus 10 sixteenths is minus 4 sixteenths. All right? So, you know, I realize for a lot of students are looking at this, you know, where am I going to go now? And I'm looking for reductions, to be honest with you. And as I do that, I'm going to do it one term at a time. And but I'm not saying you have to do that, but I'd like to do that. So 39 twelfths, well, that divides, divides by 3, right? So that would be 13, and 3 goes into 12 four times. All right. And I'm looking at the 9 twelfths, and I'm going to say divide by 3 again, and that would be 3 quarters. And then I got the 27 sixteenths. There's not much I can do about that, by the way. It's simply 27 sixteenths of an x minus one quarter. All right, that's pretty simple. Now, what I'm going to do, which may seem peculiar to you, I'm going to add one quarter to both sides. And I'm going to subtract 13 quarters of an x from both sides. Now what's nice about that? And I want to point out, what's nice about the left side, the x disappears, and 3 quarters plus 1 quarters is just the number 1. But I got troubles now. I have to do 27 sixteenths minus 13 quarters. Kind of an annoying thing, but I got to do it. Common them is 16. That's 27 minus, well, 4 times 13 is 40 and 12, 52. And let's see, 27 minus 52 is t minus 25 sixteenths. I'm going to write that down. Minus 25 sixteenths of an x. Now, I want to point out, they have something over here as an equivalent to that statement. And I just want to briefly go through that. You could actually multiply both sides by minus 1, and what would you get? Minus 1 equals 25 sixteenths of an x. Now, what I would recommend to do now is you could divide both sides by the variables of the coefficient, but I'm going to multiply both sides by the variable terms, um, the receivable the variable term. And I'm going to erase this because I, I don't really need that, to be honest with you. 
I'm going to multiply both sides by its reciprocal of minus 25 sixteenths, and its reciprocal would be minus 16 over 25. And you're going to multiply both sides by minus 16 over 25. Well, one times that number is just simply minus 16 over 25. And the right side, you get uh, just simply 1x. And that's the answer over there. Now, by the way, this is a good answer here. I also notice they put a decimal down, and I want to briefly go through that with you. Minus 16 over 25, multiplied by 4 over 4. What are you going to get? Minus 64 over 100, which is minus 0.64. All right, that's fine. Thank you.